What's up, everybody? I want to formally apologize for last week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> we were fucked up. I was tired as shit. Yeah, and we just got back from not doing it for a bit. Yeah, yeah. detoxing from quitting nicotine, and yeah. I'm a lot better now. No longer addicted. Yeah. For the I, meantime, med- I'm, I'm getting used to the new medications. Yeah. So, great times. I decided not to fill up on cheese, so no gastrointestinal <laughs> pain. Yeah, that's good. Cheese has been destroying me, dog. Just stop eating cheese. It's hard not to. You, you forget, Everything has cheese in you it. You forget, like, how much, like, cheese is, like, in the yeah. just overall American diet. Mm-hmm. Everything you buy has fucking cheese on it. Of course it. it does. You know how hard it is not to enjoy a cheese and salami tray? A whole tray? Huh? A whole tray? Okay, don't, 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 don't do that. A whole tray. Okay, I'm not the diabetic one, okay? I can get away with that. Yeah, but I don't need a whole fucking tray. Because you, you can't. I'm Your blood when you get That blood sugar diabetes. is just going to fuck it. Nah, I'm good, yeah. dog. As long as I don't balloon up too much. Mm-hmm. I, I've actually been losing weight. Yeah, me too. So the New medicine's been fucking cutting it, dude. You on that Ozempic? No, not that one. I can't uh-huh. get that one. I'm not rich enough. Uh, my uh, My wife bought, like, this supplement that... Apparently, people on TikTok claim that this is nature's Ozempic. I'm just like, you know, you're just falling for more bullshit, yeah. right? Well, it's not that like silver shit, is it's, it? I, no, okay. no, it's like some random fucking herb that's dried and put in capsules. It's kind of like you know when people were talking about like, oh, you should take ashwagandha because it mm-hmm. it boosts your testosterone and shit. For some people, yes, it does. But for other, for most people, it just you know makes yeah. you feel a little bit healthier. Yeah, TikToks. Uh, all those crazy, like all the Facebook crazes. I remember when Facebook had a, a fuck ton. They still do, but they yeah. had a fuck ton of them. They're all starting to move to TikTok. Yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to get that fucking I hops her a like foot job. <laughs> still, <laughs> she won't. Bu- she won't take the bait, dog. <laughs> I've been kicked out of so many I hops now. Okay, so I found out that that didn't actually happen. It just started from a random meme of somebody like talking about it, talking about getting a syrup foot job okay. at I hop. I thought it was an actual video because I was curious to see. I've searched so many times. <laughs> well, I was curious to see if there actually was an origin because I'm thinking like usually they all attach a name to something. Yeah. And it usually will like, you know, I feel like if somebody did record themselves doing that, they would have like blown up as a porn star or something or like have an OnlyFans page or something like that. Yeah, but I feel like if someone was doing a syrup foot job at IHOP, I don't think they would be the person you want to watch on OnlyFans. Mm. Something tells me they're not, you know, they're not. I don't know. know. I've seen worse. (laughs) I've seen worse, dog. Did you ever get that Twitter link to the girl with the maggots? Yes. That was bad. That was fucking terrible. That was bad. Yeah. And then you go down that, you go down that Reddit, like fucking uh, rabbit hole where they explain like how people do this. Mm -hmm. Like it's a real thing that people love to do where they just, Stuff shit up up there for it to rot, so they can do this. It's so fucking God, it's so disgusting. Fucking gross, it's it's just so bad for you. Anyways, welcome to another episode <laughs> of the Night Funk. We're back Woo! in here at the Night Funk Studio. What's going on, everybody? Yeah, boy. It's our first guest, Donald J. Trump. Donald J. Trump, what are you planning on doing this year? I'm gonna go to prison. <laughs> I'm gonna get dropped to soap, and I'm gonna let Tyrone hit it. <laughs> I'll tell you, my bussy's gonna pop. <laughs> as they say, oh. as Erica Badu once said, you better call Tyrone because <laughs> this bussy's know. moist. I'm <laughs> hoping because um, uh, we're talking about news today. Um, the news of August, baby. Yeah. Um. So you know, Trump today, uh, he's going to Fulton County. He's gonna get booked. He's gonna have his mugshot done. Giuliani and all the other fuckers. Is that happening to today? Like, yeah. Actually today? Okay. Yeah. They all, they, all the other ones did it already. Uh, and that's where that meme came out or that you, TikTok came out. Giuliani just looks like uh, the love child of the penguin from the Tim Burton Batman. And uh, uh, what was his name? Fucking. I forget. But yeah, he just he's an ugly motherfucker. It's funny as you say that I'm looking at my uh, Google News page mm-hmm. right now and posted by uh MSNBC right now, some Trump supporters think rally outside Atlanta jail is an FBI setup. Are you serious? Yes. No, yeah, 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 cuz they're out there right now rallying and being like, "That's my president and all this bullshit." And of course there's like anti-Trump protests going on too. And people just really just cheering like 
yay, you're going to jail finally. Thank God. So what is exactly what is going to happen? Like, is he, is he going to just be held at the jail until like the final charges are no. So all they're doing right now is they're bringing him in to book him. So they're taking his fingerprints, doing the mug shot, you know, you know, every fucking like cop in there is kissing his ass right now. Apparently the, the chief came out and says like, we're going to treat him just like we treat every other person. And Fulton County has a terrible reputation for treating their prisoners. So I hope they beat his ass. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we've had a family that's been there. Yeah. So yeah, but I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. (laughs) I, yeah, I hope I hope they treat him. He's got a gun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's just my little finger. <laughs> but no, like um, everyone's already saying, like, of course, once the mugshot comes out, it's gonna be on t-shirts. It's gonna be on posters. Fucking all these mag heads are gonna be like putting it everywhere. I can't wait to see the prison TikTokers like record themselves <laughs> hanging out with Trump in jail. Well, he's not going to be in jail. Dude, have you been down either. prison TikTok? <laughs> oh yeah. Of the they're pr- cooking. <laughs> have you seen the one they're doing like a they like turn the bottom stair into the, like a barbecue. Yeah, yeah, like and it's open fire and the cops <laughs> are just letting it happen. Like he's over there cooking up like steaks and pork chops and shit. The amount of shit that they do on there. Like I saw one where this guy explained how you can make tamales. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like Cheetos and shit. Yeah, no, you take uh you, you get you buy Fritos and you mm-hmm. you crush it down with like water and some other stuff to yeah. make it into like a like maize. A yeah, and then like the meat is just like jerky. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, they use beef jerky a lot, and they also use um, um a lot of pickle juice. A lot of pickle juice. Yeah, yeah. I guess because it like helps like preserve it a little bit or I marinate guess, it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the there's one guy. He's like, like all his utensils and everything is like he cut up a like his prison card, so it's like a little knife, and the other one's like a little spatula. Sometimes you do yeah. find some wholesome stuff, though. I remember mm-hmm. one of my favorite videos is this guy who prepared his like bunk mate uh, a peanut butter jelly sandwich for his birthday Mm -hmm. and he sings him happy birthday and he managed to get like a match to put on it or something and i'm just like that's so wholesome and sweet Mm -hmm. i mean yeah they're both booked for murder but i mean (laughs) at least they're being nice it's like he is raping him but you know whatever (laughs) maybe if i make him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich he won't touch me anymore (laughs) (laughs) and he's like it's my birthday bitch (laughs) (laughs) just fuck some harder (laughs) Uh, oh god! But no, like um, I saw the one where like, or what is it like that? Oh, one guy, Cali Muscle. Yeah, yeah. He shows like this is what I used to do in prison to get all my macros in, and it's like six bags of ramen, a ba- like a pound of jerky, and a bunch of other bullshit tuna cans. I'm surprised that they can eat so much fucking ramen without getting sick. No, they do get sick. Oh, do they? Like, I mean, like they have to eat it to survive. Like I remember when my dad was in there, like he like the food sucked. Like prison food sucks. Yeah. So he was eating a lot of ramen, a lot of like chocolates and beef jerkies and shit like that. That's probably yeah. what set off his diabetes more. Mm. Um but I mean, if it wasn't for that, like you're you're it's fucking sucks, dude. How much can you negate health issues if you just work out hard? Because I have heard people say that they get by with terrible diets mm-hmm. just because they hit the gym hard as fuck. I mean, yeah, but it just the I mean, ramen, just, the salt content, like that doesn't matter. I feel like how much you work out, it's still in you. I mean, just think about the average like mountaineer kind of person who like, you know, they're making like, you know, like really greasy home cooked meals and shit, but they're out there, you know, chopping wood and doing construction and all that shit. Like they stay pretty fucking healthy. What mountaineers are you talking about? I'm talking about like people that live in like the Appalachia dog, like people who eat hearty ass meals, but they work with their hands all fucking day. Well, most of the time they hunt their food. And yeah, like grow their own. So it's. I it's mean, I better. guess that's kind of true, but I mean, some of them are probably still living off hamburger helper too, if they can get it. Like if they're really in the fucking. State, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't. I guess it really does depend on yeah. how far in there. But I mean, I, f- I feel like most people have access to a Walmart. <laughs> I feel like um, if you're ever lost in the woods, if you keep walking, like here in Appalachia, mm-hmm. like down here in the south, you'll hit a Dollar General eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I I want to say that the Appalachian Trail has at least two Dollar Generals on the way there. <laughs> To the top. There's a Bucky's. Uh, <laughs> dude, if they made a Bucky, dude, I'd fuck. That'd be the dopest shit ever. I love seeing um because I when I delivered food back in the day, I would take it up to the start of the Appalachian Trail. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's a little like campsite and a little like hotel like place where you can like rest up before you go out and everything. 
and people would order food, like one last meal before we go, you know, and live off of, you know, fucking rationed ass food. You, they have a wall, like a thing of pictures of people, and it shows them like the people that have gone from the very beginning all the way up to the very end up north. And it's like, you know, it's thousands of miles they've walked. And it shows like the before and after pictures of them. <laughs> the before picture, they're all like smiling, backpack full of shit. Mm-hmm. They're clean and everything. And then the last picture is them like, their face is just like, why the fuck did I do this? <laughs> I am so tired. My feet are bleeding. I want to go home. Yeah, I remember <laughs> I used to. I remember, like, in uh, middle school, we had a teacher who attempted to try to, like, do the whole Appalachian Trail. Yeah. He told us a story how he almost completed it, but uh, he got to the point where his feet were just so goddamn sore mm-hmm. that, like, if he continued, he just wouldn't have had a foot. Yeah. There's a, there's checkpoints all the way through it. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. You, yep. Like, when you sign up, you, you have to report that you're there. And then it shoots like a, I guess like a notice to the next checkpoint. They're like, oh, this person just checked in here. They should be arriving here eventually. Yeah. And then after a few days pass, but you're not there, that's when they're like, hey, this person might be hurt or missing. Yeah. Um, but they actually have like little post offices in each one. Mm-hmm. So what people do is they'll have like their shoes and like maybe two or three extra pairs with them. But you'll walk right through those shits. Like they're just torn to bits. After. Have you heard of, about that shit about that haunted cabin that people say to avoid? Oh, really? Like there's, a, there's a cabin along the Appalachian Trail that people say, do not sleep or go into this cabin. You will fucking go missing. Oh, I want to go to it now. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't do it. It's kind of like, uh, it, it's it's the same thing with the, with the they say, a lot of Appalachian people say, like, if you're on that trail, if you hear somebody calling out for you, just keep fucking oh, yeah, moving. Don't. That's a skinwalker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or. It's Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> What do you love for me? <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, so that's happening today. Uh, they're going to probably release his uh, mugshot later tonight, which is what they did. Like, when Giuliani got booked, I think he went, like, in the morning. They released it that night. Yeah. So um, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, yeah, that's a whole shit show. Um, yeah, all these people tr- that are saying, like, well, we'll see what the what the trial says. Like, this guy's fucking guilty. They're all fucking guilty. Like, we all know it. We all saw the evidence. Yeah, it's but there. I feel like they're not going to do actual time. Like, can they just throw enough money at it to where they don't have to do shit? Um, they can, but for this, it's kind of different because it's like, oh, the minimum sentence is six years. Like, mm-hmm. regardless. So. But does he have enough, like, money and power and influence to just be like, I'm going to do six years, but I'm going to do it at, like, this resort that's technically a prison. Well, no, they can't do that. It'll be a, like it'll be a federal, like some Wolf like, of Wall Street shit, you know? Like yeah. when they got arrested and they're just chilling like by the pool. No, I didn't see that part. Huh? It's near the end. Okay, but no, like I mean, he'll they'll be going to a federal prison, I think, mm. or a state uh, prison. If yeah. They get if they get found guilty here in Georgia, they should, they better get found fucking guilty because like it, the evidence is fucking there. Like whoever says not guilty is a fucking liar. Yeah. Um, I think they'll just go to, a, like, a... They're supposed to go to, like, a state penitentiary, which is way worse. <laughs> There's a part of me that wants to believe that the... that Justice will be served? No, that, like, <laughs> that if you do have enough money, you can get away with this kind of shit just because... You know, you always hear those stories about, like, how Paul Escobar, when he was in jail, like, mm-hmm. he used to get, like, prostitutes, like, sent oh, in. Oh, yeah, they were, like... Yeah, it was fucking blast for him. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like... If you've already gotten caught doing some shit, you might as well just say fuck it. Throw some money. Yeah. They're all like fuck Melania, that bitch. She's already fucking someone else. You know she is. She has to be. Yeah. There's no fucking way she isn't. But uh, what is it? But I also, mean, in China, like, you can do that. What? Uh, there's, it's like a, it's an actual job. We talked about it mm-hmm. before. In China, you can pay someone to do your prison sentence. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like it's because a lot of people. I, I've heard like th- those people exist all over the place. People who find a way to take the blame for something because they want to yeah. be in prison. No, it's not even taking the blame for it. Yeah. It's literally like, oh, hey, I'll do your five years for you if you pay me this much. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. is like over there, they, they probably do it for money so they can just have like commissary money and shit. But over mm-hmm. here in the States, there's been cases where people purposely, you know, take the blame for a crime they didn't commit so they can be in prison because they feel safe there. Yeah. And I think it's because... 
you know, after fucking the Reaganomics bullshit where he got rid of all the fucking mental, yeah. like, uh, uh, mental illness, like, facilities, or, like, I guess the insane asylums is what they used to call them. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these people ended up homeless and, you know, it's scary to be homeless as opposed to just find, being a place where everything is more routine. Yeah. A lot of people find comfort in routine, even if it is prison. Yeah. It's just those people that, I mean, that's where they find that they're good. A lot of prisoners, a lot of like lifers, they're like, oh yeah, I was, first time I came in, it was like a five year stint and then I got out and I was like, I, I can't deal with life out here. Did I ever tell you about that guy I used to work with who, uh, is probably like serving a life sentence now. Oh, fun. Yeah, because uh, he was around my age. He was a little bit younger than me. I think at the time th- that I was working at this particular job, I was probably like 22, 23 at the time, right? And he was like 20 or 21. Yeah. And uh, he was uh, he was a fucking headache. But he was a nice guy for the most part. Mm-hmm. And I just always noticed that he was just always struggling and I always felt bad for him. So I'd try to help him out from time to time. You know, I'd loan him like five or 10 bucks and he'd pay me back when payday came around. And then sometimes he might needed like a ride to work or ride home and shit. Right. But eventually he got to the point where he was showing up to work tired all the time. And I was just like, why aren't you getting any sleep? And he's just like, I don't know. I just haven't been sleeping, but I come to find out that he was just fucking partying the nights Uh. away and spending all his money on coke and shit like that. And um, eventually he got fired. Then I hadn't heard anything from him for a while. Because uh, I had bumped into him a couple of times after he had like uh, quit that job. Because he ended up being like a quick connect for me to, you know, um, to get some weed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I only had gotten weed from him like once or twice before I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to, I'm just going to stop associating myself with him. Right. Yeah. Cause he just seemed to get kept digging himself down a hole. And one day I come into work and they're like, did you see the fucking newspaper today? I'm like, no, cause I don't fucking read the newspaper, <laughs> but like, let me see it. It was him on the newspaper, him and three other people had killed a taxi driver. A what? Yeah. And this, uh, well, he apparently didn't. He was in the car when it happened. No, the 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 person who pulled the trigger admitted to doing the. Uh, they ended up. Oh, uh, okay. He they she admitted that she did it. It was him, another male. Uh, no, two other males and a female, mm-hmm. and then the female she was an older woman. By older, I mean like she was like in her late thirties. Okay. For whatever reason, she pulled a gun on the taxi driver, asked him to hand over the money. He was like, I'm a fucking taxi driver. What kind of money do I have? Yeah. And then she didn't hesitate and just killed him. And he ended up just running. Like, he just left the scene and just fucking booked it out of there. Mm -hmm. But sure enough, because he was there, he also gets the charge. And uh, they ended up fucking uh, looking for him, and they eventually found him, like, hiding at his mom's house mm. and his mom immediately was just like he's over there yeah because his mom didn't want anything to do with him that's why she didn't call the cops well i want to say maybe she did oh, because okay. i mean i don't know i know for a while he was like homeless because he basically spent so much money on drugs that he eventually was just living like day by day at a motel mm-hmm. for a while because you know you can get those like you can get like a fucking fifty dollar, like yeah. a fifty dollar room at one of those Roach motels and shit. Yeah, and uh, he did that for a while, but then once he was unemployed, he basically was on the street and shit. And then uh, I heard about this shit. And what was crazy is he tried to contact me while he was locked up. Are you serious? Yeah, I guess he was just trying to reach out to anybody that could try to help him. But if he was looking at like a fucking like life sentence, I'm like. Look, the best I could do is, like, send you 10 bucks to your commissary, but, bro, I can't get you yeah. no damn lawyer, none of that shit. But, I mean, I, I just straight up just didn't, like, yeah. respond. Because I'm like, I don't know what you want from me, but also I just felt like a desperate attempt to try to get somebody to, like, yeah, like help him or something. It sucks to see somebody that young, like, end up going to jail for that long. Yeah. But it's kind of like nobody put you there, dog. Well, you did this to yourself, bro. You were hanging out with those fucking people, and you were hang- you were doing a lot of fucking drugs, and you were going down that fucking hole. Yeah. 
you look fucking stupid, man. Yeah, I got a bunch of, uh, a couple of people that I knew from high school. Um, prison, they're doing stupid shit. Arrested, meth. Just, it's like, I mean, no one told you to do it. Sorry. <laughs> but. One of my favorite stories from a guy I knew from high school was the story how he uh, got high on a bunch of downers, like pills, and he fell asleep at a red light with his foot on the brake. At least it was on the break. And then the cops, like, knocked on the window. He woke up, and he they were just like, you want to explain yourself? Put it in park. He put it in park, and he was just like, what do you want? He's like, you're in the middle of the fucking road. Like, yeah. are you on something? He's like, I obviously am. Just fucking arrest me already. Like, yeah. he, he, And they arrested him, of course. Yeah. He got out of jail. He got sober for a couple of years, and then he got back on something Mm -hmm. and the last thing i had heard was he got into a fight with his mom because he stole all the acs freon (laughs) so the car the house didn't have ac and when she confronted him about it he stole her car and then crashed it in a cornfield like a mile away and just ran for it (laughs) like where are you going dude what the fuck (laughs) i got all this freon (laughs) it'll keep me cool Uh. He was a wild fucking yeah. dude. Uh, nothing, not, not gonna lie. He was actually one of the funniest dudes I've ever met in my life. But uh, I think after he went to jail for that and he got out, he actually became a born again Christian. But because he became mm. a born again Christian, he doesn't talk to anybody that he used, he knew from high school. That's so dumb. Yeah, because now I, I guess he tra- he blamed everybody around him for his actions. Yeah. You know, it's such a it's <laughs> such a dumb thing. Like, I get it if you find like. You know, like we said before, if you find the answers that you need in a higher power, cool. But don't blame other people for your fuck it fuck ups. Like yeah. it's not it's not your like no one put the pills in your hand and told you to eat them. You did them. Yeah. No it's one ca- told you to steal the freon in your mom's car. Yeah. No, nothing ever nothing used to piss me off more is when people would be like, How could you not be a Christian? Where is your moral biometer? Like how are you? How are you gonna know it's bad to rape? I'm like, it's like, dude, I don't need a fucking book to tell me not to rape someone. <laughs> for one, I don't need someone to tell me you shouldn't murder people. And I, the reason I say that is because I heard that once from a fucking like speech that um, mm-hmm. that Steve Harvey did on one of his shows, where he's just like, I don't conduct business with nobody that isn't a Christian because I can't do business with somebody who doesn't have a moral bar, uh, bar- barometer, whatever the fuck it is. Oh, that's why he doesn't do movies then. Huh? All the producers are Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> More than likely. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if somebody that's like, you know, comes from, uh, I think he's originally from the South. Oh, no, he's from, or is he from Chicago? Well, okay. he's from a very, he's from like a, a certain part of the country yeah. where people just don't trust certain people. Yeah. So it is and what it I is. I think he's like heavily like. Of course, like Baptists. Yeah. So that's pretty rough there. I've been seeing this whole thing that I thought was funny where somebody had talked about like, so that new Blue Beetle movie came out and it fucking tanked. Yeah, that uh, sucks. It, it, it sucks because, you know, a lot of people were rooting for it because you're like, you know, finally some Latino representation, right? But what was funny was uh, some people had took a notice to where like, if you actually watch the movie, they said that the Latino representation in it is actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's just that the overall story is just bad, and you know, obviously, too much CGI can ruin a movie and all this, oh, all God. this other stuff. Did you watch the new Flash? Uh, no, but I heard it's probably the biggest financial loss in the movie ever. It's so bad, dude. Like it's, the the CGI on it, mm-hmm. it's fucking terrible. Like it's like it looks like a shitty made for TV movie. Yeah, it's awful. I think they said that they ended up losing two hundred million dollars on this movie because it was a four hundred million dollar movie yeah. and they only got two hundred million yeah. out of the box office. They might be able to squeeze a couple of more millions like in fucking DVD sales overseas and shit, but Yeah, but that's about it. Yeah, like that's it. Like It was well, such a dumb movie. Like I was watching and I was like, Okay, yeah, the the flashpoint story is there, but you kinda Went all over the place with it. It's well, weird. it was destined to fail because one, Ezra that, Miller yeah. is a fucking like maniac, and then yeah. on top of that, you are basically just trying to do like, like you're trying to do Spider Man like Far From Home, 
Like where they're like, oh, the three Peter Parkers meet. Yeah. Let's do that with Flash. But instead, we're gonna get Michael Keith and Batman. Uh, I mean, that was fucking cool. That was really cool. Yeah, and he came out with the fucking Batwing and everything. I was like, but, oh, the, but you should have just made another. Fu- you should have just made an old man like Bruce Wayne Batman movie movie with Michael Keaton. Yeah, they said that they were gonna try to attempt that. I, I heard rumors a long time ago that they were thinking about making Michael Keaton be old man Batman for a Batman Beyond movie. Oh, that'd be fucking cool. And that would that would have been perfect. Yeah, hells yeah. Cast a young fucking smoke show of a guy mm-hmm. to be fucking, you know, um, what's the name of the uh, Batman Beyond guy? Terry. Uh, Terry something. Uh, Terry Crews. <laughs> Terry Crews? Just Terry, big ass buff Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Just pecs moving. I love I love that photo of Terry Crews dressed up as He Man. Oh yeah, he makes the perfect He Man. Yeah, uh, but anyways, but yeah, like if they had done that, that would have been yeah. so much cooler than this fucking Flashpoint bullshit. But also, no Flashpoint that the Flashpoint story <clears throat> could have been good if they stuck to it. It would have been cool to see, you know, the Flash go back in time. Yeah, he, it's just him. There's no other like him in the past. It's just him. Or not in the past. Like, he goes back, saves his mom, comes back to the future. The future's, of course, changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aquaman is fighting uh, uh, Wonder Woman because she killed his, uh, what's her face, Mara or whatever the queen was. Whatever yeah. Amber Heard's character was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, she kills her, so they're in war. And then that's causing, like, all this, like, destruction in the world because he keeps flooding everything. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, yeah, they're like humans stay out of the fucking way and of course the humans don't want to and yeah and then at the end reverse flash comes out eobor thon and he comes from the future and he he mainly just wants to fuck with the flash yeah like that's it i don't understand why is it that dc can't get their shit together dude they have the money and resources to get the right group of writers and directors to make good movies it's because they're getting it's it's just the do you think they have like too many corporate execs being like, That's this is, is how we got to do it? Yeah, it's like they're following, they're literally following a blueprint of what they think would work. And yeah. they're not letting people be like, well, actually, if we do it this way and kind of pull more from the comics and don't change this, yeah, it'll be a fucking great movie. Because I know Marvel has a different, like, uh, they have a different way of going about it. They, like, Marvel storylines have always been very, like, loose and free and fun, you know? Yeah. So they have a lot of liberty to just have creative choices to from from the get go, you know. Yeah. That's something that Stan Lee was always adamant about. Like, you know, like people had always asked him, like, who would win in a fight. He's like, well, it's all about how you write it, you yeah. know. It's what universe they're from, what you know, multiverse or whatever. It's all up to the right. Yeah, yeah, it's like it, it doesn't matter as long as it makes a good story. If the story is compelling, then it's going to work itself yeah. out. Because there's some storylines where it's like, oh, Captain America, a fucking building falls on him and he's able to hold it up until like he gets help to push it yeah. away. But in another storyline, he's just a really strong human. Yeah. And, and that's it. Like, and so, in some storylines, Hulk cannot be killed. In some storylines, Hulk has been killed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's one storyline where Hulk is literally the last person living on Earth, and that there's was other a good one. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, there's also uh, the Planet Hulk series mm-hmm. and his son and shit, which his son actually got like introduced in one of the fucking storylines. It was uh, She Hulk, and he looked weird. Like people were like, "All right, it yep. sets it up for a World War Hulk that they're gonna do." Yeah, but I think I think that's just been a thing. A lot of people have been complaining about Marvel's really been slipping on the CGI lately. Oh yeah, they have. They're cutting corners on that. Yeah, and I think it's because they're trying to pump out so much goddamn content that they're lessening the budget. Well, it's the workers are overworked too. Yeah, I guess that yeah. is true. They're um they're trying to in in other news in entertainment news. Marvel has no reason to fucking the, cut back on that money. Yeah, but the the visual effects teams for Marvel, yeah, I think for Disney, they're trying to get on a union so that oh. way they can get you know, you know the the fucking. You know, not have to work like eighty hour weeks to try to turn out all they can. I've been hearing people say that that new Elemental movie flopped. Elemental, yeah, from Pixar, yeah, surprising, yeah, yeah. People say that it, it flopped. Looked weird. I was like, what's the what what's the story on this? The story is about a couple that can't be can't be together because they're different. So basically, it's like a commentary on like, uh, uh, on like interracial marriages. 
Really? Yeah, that's what people assume it is because I mean it, it's kind of obvious. Like, oh, it's society. Society cannot approve of this water man being with this fire yeah. woman. You know, it, that's what they're doing. You know, but it's like so many fucking movies try to be Zootopia, but mm-hmm. they can't pull it off. Like, you know how fucking dumb it is? You'll that, never be Zootopia. You can't be Zootopia. Yeah. You can't. That movie did it perfect. You know, a movie I thought wasn't gonna be good, but it ended up really being really fucking good. What? That uh. That uh, that one about the souls that they did. Oh, soul. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, that one was good. Yeah, I didn't think it was gonna be great, and then when I watched it, I was like, "Holy shit, this that is good!" That one really went under the radar because yeah. it, because it came out during the pandemic, mm-hmm. and it because it just got pushed to streaming, and so a lot of people haven't seen that movie. But it is a damn good movie. Yeah, it's a great way to explain to a kid like we don't know what what's before and after now i still will say yeah. my favorite movie ever so far that i've that i've seen them make uh, uh it was turning red turning red was so fucking turning good red was good it was so good i love the animation style mm-hmm. and i love the message behind it you know like it's yeah. a it's a great story for like young girls you know yeah. but or like you know are maturing and shit yeah and uh there's so much like nuance and like funny little things that they do mm-hmm. that make it feel like oh these are kids in the 90s you know mm-hmm. boy bands are the fucking like hot shit even like the the boys are can't deny that they're into it you know yeah and it's just uh i just thought it was a perfect movie i really think it's probably yeah, one of the really better it, it's probably the first movie since like moana that i genuinely enjoyed cuz it was just that one it's Inside or that that movie, the what the fuck is called? Red yeah. Panda, the whatever the fuck is called. I'll be the first one to say it. Frozen two sucked. Yeah, Stop. it was bad. Frozen one was bad too. Yeah, I didn't but, care uh, for it. What is it that? Um, the fucking uh, what's it called? I'm forgetting the movies now. The what? Colombian one, whatever the fuck it is. Oh fucking um, what the hell is it called? Encanto. Encanto, yeah. That one. Uh, and I feel that. Red it's all about movie. that. It's all about that dark skinned sister. You know what I'm saying? God damn. Which one? Uh, she's making my shrub grow. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Dude, it's just something about like I love a dark skinned woman with a strong nose. Oof, I don't know what it is. But yeah, but no, like those two movies. Uh, there was a lot of generational trauma stuff in those. Yeah, and it was like it's good that they're starting to show that. Like, hey. Your kids are a little fucked up because you fucked up. Yeah. It's like also the other learn. girl too. I think about it. The one that could hear things like from very far away. She was really hot too. Okay. I got a type. Okay. Cartoons. Huh? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> no. Um, God, what was it? No, you know who can get it? Who? The lady from uh, Wreck It Ralph, the blonde one with the gun, the one that marries. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that was the Pixie one that was, Felix. wasn't that the one that was voiced by? Um, yeah, that one chick from. Uh, yeah, from uh, uh, that singing show. I was about to say fucking Jamie Lee Curtis. I was like, that's not no. Jamie Lee Curtis. It's fucking uh, what's her fucking? It's the, it's Lesbo Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> that's you know one I mean? way to fucking say it. I mean, that's the. I mean, it, yeah, yeah, she's from that one show where they all sang and yeah. and it was really annoying. Yeah, yeah, but no, yeah, that, yeah, but um. Going back to news. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Today's the news episode. Yeah, it is. It? God damn. I right, told well, you, dude, I've been real bad lately. No, it's fine. We're filling time. <laughs> uh, let's stick to, you know, uh, Donald Trump. You know, he had after, you know, before he did all this, he went yesterday mm-hmm. during the Republican debate to talk to Tucker Carlson on X. And it was literally him just spouting the same shit he always says. Yeah. The election was stolen. I'm still the president. Everyone else is wrong. Look at me, everyone look at me. And it pulled, like you said, it pulled a lot more views in the Republican debate. And that Republican debate was a shit show, apparently. Uh, they let the crowd do whatever they wanted, so they were booing them, cheering them, being loud and shit. I'm looking at a Washington Post article right now, yeah. and they're talking about who performed the best at the debate. And right now, sitting at 29% in the lead is Ron DeSantis. And Are you then, serious? And then How? 26% is Vivek Rum... Rum, Rum, Swabby, Sh- Rum Swami. Yeah. Yeah. I, that guy... Who's that guy? I have Where the fuck did he come billi- from? He's a billionaire who is funding his own campaign. That's oh. all he is. And all Another he did, Trump. Yeah. No, all he did during that debate is... Uh, I was listening to... Um, uh, uh, what was it? It was a, podca- a news podcast, and they were having a little conversation. 
he did a really good job. They were like, the main winner of that whole debate was Vivek uh, Mm -hmm. Ramaswamy because he just, he just like sucked on Trump's balls so much that debate. Mm -hmm. And he, if anything, if Trump doesn't, if Trump comes out of this and is found not guilty, and if he is, it's going to be, it's going to be fucking ridiculous. And if he wins the presidency, people were like, Vivek will probably be his running mate. Mm. Or he'll be some higher power in the government because he kissed Trump's ass so much last night. Yeah. Uh, Ron DeSantis did jack shit, apparently, because everyone else was yelling at each other. Yo. And he doesn't like being around people. He's such, like, a fucking, like, like, like in person. Like, he does not like being around people. He doesn't know how to talk to people. So he just like. Did you see that one clip of the, somebody interviewing him? And, and he's he was, grinding his teeth. He's grinding his. He's, he's coked. coked he's out of coked his up. Fucking mind. His eyes were all. That's wide why he's so shit. fucking weird. He's from Florida. He's a cokehead, yeah. dog. But like, no, like last night he literally just like let everyone else talk while he was just standing there smiling away. Mm-hmm. And then of course all of them just parroted the same shit. All of them said they'd be behind Trump if he's uh, found guilty. And uh, they all wanted to get rid of the Department of Education for some fucking reason. Just, I don't. I don't understand that. Why? Yeah. Um, like I said before, I think it's just they're blaming. They want to blame someone for all the stuff that happens in school, so mm-hmm. like shootings and all the all the all the arguments about trans kids and and all the shit that happens, like the banning books and everything. They want to blame it on the Department of Education. Have you seen some of the clips that people have been showing of like some of the new like? videos that they're allowed to show at the school that's only in florida in florida yeah that's that prager university shit oh my god it's so bad dude like one of them was literally like like oh yeah well um we need more we need better sustainable energy like coal and oil yeah like uh windmills are not like uh uh useful because they kill birds and there's (laughs) one that says like climate change is a myth and it's like no the (laughs) fuck it isn't oh no the one that's really funny is the one where they go back in time to interview slaves, fa- the famous black people in history, where mm-hmm. they're just like, "Well, slavery's always been a natural thing of history." Yeah, and it's, it's like fucking ridiculous. It's dude. so fucking dumb. Also, I'm looking at this article right now, yeah. and it's showing a. Uh, so DeSantis was at 29 percent, and Rashami was at 26 percent. Right, um, under them, 15 percent was Nikki Haley. Yeah, and then thirteen percent was none of these slash don't know, and then everything <laughs> under that just trickles down. Pence with seven percent, Christie yeah. Scott four percent, and then Burgum and Hutchinson one percent. Yeah, it's just Nikki Haley surprised everyone because when they were asking about like um, everyone was saying like oh Bidenomics is fucking up the country and blah 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 and all this sort of stuff. It's not doing anything. It's ruining our nation. Nikki Haley was the only person to say is like actually the blame should be on all of us. On Republicans and Democrats, because during the pandemic, we voted in like uh, all these like cuts and everything, and we ended up not doing what we were supposed to be doing. We put a lot of people, more, a lot more people ended up being on Medicaid, a lot more people be, ended up being on like food stamps and everything like that because we didn't do enough and people lost their jobs. And it's not our money that we're playing with, is we're <laughs> fucking up everyone else's money. And everyone was like, okay, you said something. Okay, cool. But yeah. I need I need to flip this real quick. What you do? Uh so <laughs> is it a- it's it's an insider article where they're they 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 showed the first photo of Rudy <clears throat> Giuliani's mugshot. Yeah, he's like <laughs> Yeah, but that's not the part that's funny. The part that's funny is the ads around it. They're all just buff old dudes. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, uh god i should have set up the tv today i forgot yeah, to fucking uh, do it but yeah his mugshot looks fucking like he looks yeah. like a gremlin no they said he's the he's mixed between uh the penguin and i keep forgetting what the other person is but yeah yeah uh, oh fester from the adams family yeah. yeah on some sadder news that uh has been going on for anybody who has been living under a rock and hasn't noticed so uh I think they have over 100 people confirmed dead in the fires in Maui. Oh, yeah. yeah it's like 110 up now. Yeah, and it's uh, it's pretty bad. For anybody listening who had plans to going to Hawaii, don't. Yeah. Stay away from Hawaii right now. If anything, please uh, donate. Donate money to the Maui um, 
wildfire disasters. I thought you were about to be like, please donate money to the Night Fun Punk. <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, no I, it's just like the news that came out of there that immediately after they got phone service, people started getting phone calls from like people saying they're, uh, they're real estate developers trying to buy their properties so they can develop it. Yeah. Like it's like immediately after they had no time to like mourn their dead or anything. So from it's what, fucking ridiculous. So from what I saw is that people said that the initial fire had started from really bad electrical infrastructure from yeah. the Hawaii electrical companies. Yeah. It's and it's coming appa- out. They found video and everything too. <laughs> and it's been fucking like documented for a while that they have had a terrible, like they've had terrible electrical infrastructure that has caused fires in the past. Yeah. And also like wires hanging way too fucking low and they've and done the, nothing to fucking fix it. The city wouldn't uh, trim the trees or anything. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, well, it was just bound to happen. They, There's a whole report where they said in it, it was like, if we don't do anything about this, there's going to be a massive fire. Yeah. And it's in the report. And it was like a year before it happened. Mm-hmm. And nothing was done in the fire. Have you heard of any of the conspiracies yet? The death ray from the sp- <laughs> space. <laughs> so fucking stupid. So you're telling me it was fucking India? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they were on the dark side of the moon. They put the fucking lasers and they're like, you no, know they what? just got there. You just got there. <laughs> That's what they want you yeah. to think. In other dog. news, India is the fourth <laughs> nation to make it to the moon. Right behind the US of A, of course, we're number one. Yeah. Uh Russia, uh China, <laughs> and now India. You know, when they landed on the dark side of the moon, the first message that was relayed back was just a message that said send bobs. Send bobs? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? You've never seen that meme? No. Of like when an, oh, send bobs. Okay, yeah, send boobs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think there's already like See, a... See, Vagine. <laughs> there's already a, a, an Indian guy set up with a stall just just throwing his hands into the soup and yeah. making food for everyone. I get... I go down on a fucking... Uh, a uh, rabbit a hole. A rabbit hole watching like all the fucking Indian vendors and some of the weird so shit that they do. gross, dude. Some of it is fucking weird. Yeah. Like, uh, I, uh, the one I saw was uh, they were cutting up all these melons with these like, dirty ass knives and they're doing it on the floor and they're, they peel them and then, and they're like, yeah, cool. And the guy's wearing a glove. It's like, okay, he's wearing a glove. He peels it, cores it out, then throws it on the floor behind him for someone to pick up. Oh my God. And then they pick it up and throw it into a bucket of water that just looks disgusting. And then this other guy comes over and he's like pulling him out to cut him. But before he has to sanitize. So he goes to the same fucking bucket where all these things are and he starts washing his hands in it and he starts splashing water onto himself and it's dripping all into the bucket again. Oh my God. And then he just starts cutting them. It's just like, what the fuck, dude? Some things I just don't under fucking, I just don't yeah. understand, dude. Like, I remember one thing you sent me a video of them where this guy was just putting fucking sauce on something over and mm-hmm. over again. I'm like, what is the food? Yeah. It just looks like a bowl of water mm-hmm. of just sauces and fucking gun. You know what's really been fucking like, ugh, it's been so fucking disgusting. When people share videos of British people and how they like to eat fries, like chips. Oh, God, with the peas. The and mushy everything. peas, Ugh. and they covered in gravy. I'm like, yeah. that is so fuck. Oh, and we're fucking gluttonous for liking chili cheese fries. Have you yeah. had chili cheese fries? They're, They're good. fucking amazing. Yeah. But mushy no. peas? Yeah, it's fucking disgusting. We need a fucking... We need to invade Britain. We need to give them a taste of you their own medicine. Fucking... Just drop the nuke on them. <laughs> Fuck the king. <laughs> uh, fucking Charles, yeah. you dumb. With your swollen ass hands. Swollen. You see For that real. picture with his ring like cutting into his finger? I don't. Why are his hands so fucking Because he's swollen? old. He hasn't eaten his like children that day. So. He's retaining all that fucking water. It's all that evil just backing up in Do you them. think fucking uh, they do eugenics over there and shit? Probably. Fuck yeah. yeah they're, pro- they're probably pumping up baby blood in their veins and yeah. shit. He's probably. um. I mean, he was on Epstein's Island, along with the sons. Yeah, yeah. I I know. Um, I was I was going down this one rabbit. I go big, I go down a lot of rabbit holes whenever yeah. um I'm You're bored. You're supposed to be sleeping. Yeah, when I'm supposed <laughs> to be sleeping. Honestly, I think in the past two days I've had like four hours of sleep. It, but that's actually kind of normal for me. You need to sleep more. Uh, <laughs> you need to sleep more. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways. <laughs> This, uh, this episode sponsored by Sleep Aid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, I okay, 
I think I should I should rephrase. I've probably gotten four hours of continuous sleep, mm-hmm. but I tend to take naps. I, I I'm basically a nar- uh, fucking what's his name, uh, the famous Renaissance artist. Which one? There's fucking hundreds of them. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Leonardo da Vinci. Okay. Uh, he used to have this thing where he used to stay up four hours at a time and then take two hour naps. Oh. That's how he slept. Which, for some reason, apparently he said it was a more effective way of like of of. That just seems annoying. Well, from my understanding, was like he was infamous for being a procrastinator. Yeah. But. Because he's sleeping all the damn time. Well, I don't think it was that. I think it's just because the way his brain was wired. I think he was probably one of the earliest fucking people with ADHD. Because he was like, I know I don't know a lot of people. Um, I saw this one video that they talked about. They were comparing him to Raphael. Raphael was fucking like way fucking more famous than he was as an artist, right? Because he was one of those guys that stuck to the fundamentals of, of art and painting, right? Yeah. Almost to a T. But when it came later in life, after um, uh, Leonardo had passed away, mm-hmm. people started looking into his stuff, and they're like, yo, this guy was fucking insane. Like, look <laughs> at all the shit that he, like, all these different techniques in painting that he yeah. did and drawing, but he was also into engineering and math and science and all this other shit. Like, he was a fucking madman. Yeah. He was a renaissance man. Yeah. And he's also probably closeted, closeted gay or trans, you I mean, know? A lot of people believe that the Mona Lisa is just a It's pa- a guy. Huh? They say it's a guy. No, a lot of people believe it was him drawing himself as a woman. No, there was another one where it was saying it was, like, it was just a guy in drag, like some random guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. But um, but no, after Raphael died, uh, uh, Michelangelo avenged his brothers and killed uh, Splinter or uh, Shredder's son. Mm. Yeah. Ronin. You know they're making that into a video game? Yeah. That's pretty cool. It, I think it's being made by the same people who did uh the Batman games. Ronin's a really cool concept <laughs> as a as a as a book. Yeah. But graphic novel was okay. It's it's a very bare bones story. It's, oh, yeah. it, that's the whole story. It's just like I revenge my brothers and that's it. Just email the writer and tell him he fucking sucks. Oh, I don't want to tell them that they suck. They're the original <laughs> writers, but I'm like, okay, I get it. I I understand why it's yeah. so like I mean Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles itself was already like a gag. Yeah, it was always just it was it was literally a whole play on like making fun of like the four biggest like popular things at the time. So you know, teenage making fun of the like the all the teen superhero groups like Teen Titans, yeah. mutants making fun of the X Men, ninjas making fun of Daredevil, and then uh, turtles making fun of Howard the Duck. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. Because you know anthropomorphic animals were yeah. becoming a thing, and then the whole like group thing was basically making fun of daredevil even more, you know, mm-hmm. cause you know, in, in teenage mutant Ninja turtles, it's the foot clan where in uh, daredevil, it's, it's the, the hand. hand. Yeah. And then instead of stick, it's splinter this mm-hmm. being the mentor. And then instead of one guy, it's four guys, mm-hmm. you know, instead of them being blind, they're turtles and they're obsessed with pizza. It might make sense, you know, like, <laughs> It makes sense. And then Batman's there. And then there's that one autistic girl that fucking dresses up as them and does backflips in the backyard. Have you ever seen that video? No. It's like a girl who's got like really bad autism and she's obsessed with Ninja Turtles. So she eats pizza every day. Oh my God. And then she also like bought like full on like the outfit from like the fucking like Movie? the movies. Oh yeah. And she's like outside every day like doing ninja poses oh, and shit. Oh yeah. She's like some weird like. Like she talks like let's, them too. It's not split hair. She's autistic. Like yeah. there's there's no way you get to that level of fandom without being a little bit on the spectrum. I mean, some no, you can just be like just fucking weird too. You can <sighs> just be weird. You don't have to be autistic. Well, that's the thing, man. So many people have gone through life not being diagnosed, and I feel like it's just obvious yeah. at this point to be like that person was autistic. You're telling me that like you can go back and look at a guy who has like a whole house decked with Pac-Man stuff that he isn't a little that bit on the fucking guy. Like or he the was guy so in love with it and everything. It's just so that guy was so fucking weird, dude. He was horny for Pac-Man. Yeah, and it was just like he he's going to murder someone <laughs> wearing that Pac-Man mask that he has. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to fucking murder someone and eat them. And there's some things that I understand. Maybe some things are just, like, culturally so significant to a person that they obsess over it. But some things are 
uh, blur the lines between just like being obsessed with something that's culturally significant, like yeah. for the sake of history, or something that this person is just madly obsessed with, you know? Yeah. And a good example would be like the guy who's got the biggest collection of Barbies. Like that guy is just a gay dude that loves Barbies because yeah. he thinks that they're pretty and he wanted to collect all of them. And mm -hmm. so he, and he has the money and fucking ability to buy all of them. But now he's like, now I have to collect Margot Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> God, wouldn't that be fucking crazy? That should be a fucking horror movie, dude. Yeah. Like this guy is just like captures Ro uh, Margot uh, Robbie, Margot and, uh, Robbie, and has her like locked up in a like a box. Yeah. What is it? There was a I saw a TikTok today. Uh, Drew Barrymore was doing like an interview, like a live audience interview, mm -hmm. and apparently she's had a stalker. And during the interview, he just like rushes the stage, and he's like, you hear him saying like, "Hi, my name is whatever. Um, you should know me by now." And it was it was super menacing, like the way he said it. Like, if you don't mm. fucking know me, we're gonna have problems. And like, you see her face; she thought it was just some like like super fan coming at her. But when she, once he says his name, she knew who he was. She knows that about him being her stalker. And you see her go, "Oh!" And like, security comes out and they like get her off stage and they pull the guy away. It's fucking crazy, dude. Wow, fucking people just and some imagine having someone so obsessed with you that. They believe themselves like, no, they know about me. And if they don't, oh, that's a problem. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. It's like, Ugh. I don't, I never understood, like, like, I'm, f I'm a fan of a lot of things, mm -hmm. but I've never been like a fan where I'm like, oh, if I meet this person, I'll fucking faint or die or, yeah, yeah. or I will fucking like stand out in the rain to just get a glimpse of them, you know? Like I don't understand why some people get to that level. Yeah. Like it doesn't it's never made sense to me. Like I there's a lot of things that I love. There's a lot of things that I wish I could have done. Like it would have been awesome to met to to maybe have meet uh, uh, Kintaro Miura, the writer of Berserk, but he passed away. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have stalked him to get his autograph. Yeah. I would have been like, oh, he's at a convention. That would be awesome to go meet him mm -hmm. and pay to get his signature so I can have something as a memento, you know? Yeah. Like, I have autographed stuff from, like, things that I love. Like, I have, like, you know, the, the Mario thing, like, autographed. Didn't then, he, uh, he retired from it now? Yeah, I, I guess Nintendo has officially said that they're going to retire him, but they said that he's going to still be a Mario ambassador, which I guess he's going to be a part of Nintendo things in the future, just okay. not voicing him anymore. Wow. And I think it's probably just because of, like, you know, he, I guess, getting older in age, maybe he... He, maybe he has like some health issues that yeah. people don't know about. They got AI now, man. <laughs> maybe yeah. I would hate to find out that's a thing. Apparently, they use it a lot more in Japan than they do here, and yeah. it's not like for nefarious reasons. They just like it's it makes things easier for them, mm -hmm. like more automated things are easier to understand and everything when you have a voice telling you what it needs, what it needs. Well, what I've, needs I've heard that it helps a lot with crunch when it comes to animation because you know there's yeah. just a demand for anime now and. The, People just don't have the time and patience to put out like stuff. Yeah. Um, Everyone wants the whole season right now. Yeah. Yeah. Which is hard to do because a lot of things don't translate well. No. And I'm, I was, watch, I'm watching that one. It's that uh, that bucket list of the dead thing. Oh yeah, Zom 100. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty funny. I like yeah. it. I, I just like the whole concept that the guy is just like. You know, the world fucking ended. There's zombies everywhere. But he's like, this is the best day of my fucking life. I don't got to go to work anymore. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a... The one that I have been wanting uh, to watch, I haven't had a chance. Me. I've been hearing that um, uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners is a really good anime. Huh. And it's it's it has nothing to... I think it, it's in the world of the game. But it's but own I, story. It, yeah, it's its own yeah. storyline. I heard it's really fucking good. Okay. All right. <laughs> Next story. Uh, the leader of, of Wagner Group, uh, the the private military that's fighting Ukraine for mm -hmm, Russia, mm -hmm. uh, Yegevny Prigozhin dies in a tragic plane crash. Yeah, Matthew Pierogi just got yeah. shot the fuck out of the sky. Yeah, no, there's fucking video. You see, like, it's just tumbling out of the sky. And there's yeah. like, a huge cloud of, like, smoke. Like, something fucking hit it. It's weird, because the Russian government said it was by a heart attack. What? <laughs> Not just joking. <laughs> oh, God, that'd be funny. He's like, how do we kill him? 
Fuck, we said heart attack. Yeah, he was flying the plane. <laughs> it makes me think of that old video. Do you remember the um, the Metal Gear Solid like uh, Eagle Raptor cartoons? Oh yeah. Where he's like he uh, he died from a heart attack. He said that looks like a bullet wound to me. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. No, but um, what's crazy though is like it was him, his second in command, and it was like his top bodyguards mm-hmm. were all on that plane. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and they're like, Russia's like, we don't know what happened. It's yeah. like, bull fucking shit, dude. You've done this so many times to your enemies. Like, people who have talked against you, you poison one guy, and he came back to Russia to prove a point, and he's in prison right now because you're like, no, he uh, was a spy. Yeah. And now he's in prison forever. <laughs> What's this? Vladimir just... Putin was seen at an AMC theater walking out of TMNT Turtles with Casey Anthony? <laughs> God, that fucking lady. Dude. <laughs> uh, dude, how wild would it be just to be like, what if you see her? Not just seeing her, but I'm just talking about like run, like seeing some like, <laughs> seeing like two, like, very like well known murderers, like, like villains. Yeah, just hanging out. It's I mean, like if you want, we can go to Fulton County right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, yo, yeah. what if, what if, <laughs> what if fucking, uh, what if, what if Donald Trump is like in is is, is like uh bunk mates with fucking R. Kelly, <laughs> Just pisses on him. <laughs> well, well, I don't think R. Kelly's locked. Is he locked up in Atlanta? I don't know actually. Maybe it would be someone pissing on him. It'd be fine. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's not gonna get locked up. He's just got to go do that, and he's got to leave. He's got to pay his uh bail. Do you got your passport? <laughs> Did you get your shots? Do you no. want to come back to America? Speaking of Casey Anthony, have you seen those TikToks of, uh, cause apparently she got like, you know, she, I mean, she takes care of herself. She stays, you know, relatively like pretty. Yeah. And there was a picture that came out of her and she'd be looking thick as fuck. And it was from behind. She has a big old dumpy. Really? And, uh, this one guy is like, Save. I mean, and no, he was like, I mean, if you get her pregnant, you know she'll take care of it. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, you know I had to Google this shit. Yeah. Oh, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. TMZ Walt Disney Hotel Resort. Oh, God damn. Right? That ass is big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And it was like every single one is just always because it's a white lady with a big butt. It's just always the same black dude doing the whole... <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> but yeah, yeah. If you had the chance, would you? Oh, uh, she's caked up, dog. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't be the first crazy bitch I slept with. Yeah. But I mean, yo, I fuck, I fucked a murderer, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I murdered that pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get revenge for that little girl. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh god, uh, that shit's fucked, dog. Yeah, but um, no, yeah. So uh, Russia just killed someone, and people are they're more than likely they're just gonna take over his uh, his mercenary group. Yeah, but other people are saying like, um, this is the time when you know the CIA's sleeper operative is gonna show up there and be like, they killed our leader. Let's go fuck up Russia now and start World War Three. Yeah, yeah. But um, in happier news. Uh, after, you know, six long years, Fire Festival 2 is happening. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, so this motherfucker got out of prison last year, and he already has Fire Festival 2 going up. So I'm assuming it's just going to be another fucking disaster. It is. And, like... There's no fucking way he can redeem this. The I'm first like- round of pre-sale tickets that he had were, like, 400 $500 each. They sold out in the first hour. People are fucking stupid, dude. Mm. The next round of tickets are going to be $700. God damn it. And then he said the tickets at the very end, they're going to be up to $7,000 a ticket. All right. I'm going to need somebody to go fucking find Ja Rule right now. Yeah. Well, that's everyone was asking. was like, is Ja Rule involved? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, dude. It's this- not fraud. It's just false advertisement. I'm like, shut the fuck, fuck up. That's fraud. <laughs> He's a fucking dumbass. Uh, it's Billy McFarland. And, you know, he spent, he got charged. He oh, shit, guilty. the guy that wrote Spawn? Yeah. Um, he got <laughs> charged with, you know, fraud and, like, wire fraud, all this other shit. He got six years in prison 
he got out in four yeah or four or five uh, for time served i guess and yeah back to his old bullshit dude like Damn. this guy doesn't stop like in, uh did you watch the fire festival you want to play four Netflix? grand for a cheese sandwich and to suck a dick <laughs> to get water <laughs> yeah, really. but no yeah like um did you watch the fire festival uh, yeah documentary yeah, uh, on the netflix one yeah 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 and then like after like all that shit happened he was like in court he got bailed out and he was in his fucking uh, apartment coming up with another plan on camera mm-hmm. and he's like no it's gonna be great we're gonna <laughs> it's gonna be like a consulting firm that you know and we're gonna work with big big companies and get all this money in and everything it's in crazy it's, it's crazy to me dude. like how like driven some scammers are dude yeah. this it's guy insane. was like the most driven scammer out there like if he wasn't a scammer he would be an extremely successful person yeah but just like <laughs> he's a fucking idiot i'm surprised that he hasn't already tried to do some kind of fucking like crypto rug pull shit he probably oh because he's been in prison well yeah i guess yeah. that is true well i mean a lot of i mean there's still a lot of people still doing that shit dude it's insane yeah. it's insane like how you i think back like two years ago mm-hmm. everybody was talking about like you need to get in crypto you need to get in crypto you need to invest in nfts you need to do this and that this and that and all the shit all that shit crashed yeah. the thing was i bought into the hype but i cashed out immediately yeah because honestly that's the smartest way to go about it like i get it some people like like to think of the ideas like oh if you uh if you put money into the next Amazon, it, you'll reap the benefits in the long run. But the thing is, the chances of that happening are so yeah, fucking slim. Because Amazon's such a fucking powerhouse. Nobody expected Amazon, which was originally an online bookstore, to yeah. become the fucking tyrant that it is now. Yeah, and then, like, now, if anyone tries to come against Amazon, they'll just buy it. Yeah. And then they'll, it'll be a part of Amazon. Amazon, do you want to buy the Knife Funk podcast? Well, let me, let me tell you right now. <laughs> we'll have Amazon tattooed on us, you know. I'm just saying, that's another 34 followers. <laughs> <laughs> on Spotify. Uh, we hit 100 today. Exclusive Woo! to you. Yeah, we hit 100 on Instagram. Let's yeah. fucking, uh, let's fucking let's go. Still, that still ain't shit, though. Man, shut up, dude. Dude. Celebrate the small wins in your life. Dude, my sister-in-law uh, posted a TikTok that got, like, 2 million views. Of what? Uh, it was just, like, some, like, you know, she she's, like, a, she does, like, vlogging and stuff. And she was able, uh, I think that. that she have one, a nip slip or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'll get you 2 million My brother-in-law is going to hear this and be just fucking, like. We'll get him on the show. Yeah. You fuck, it's funny. Last time I bumped into um, wait, was bu- that was that the one that I saw in? Uh, at yeah, the, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I, when I bumped into him recently, he was asking me something though that we talked about on the podcast, and his uh, his wife, my sister in law, was just like, "Just invite him on the show." Yeah, I'm tired of hearing him talk about the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, it's we'll funny. Get him on here, come on. Yeah, do it next week. I'll tell you right now, my wife doesn't listen to this shit. She would have already been mad at like 30 fucking different things that I've said. My my wife, she listens every now and then. She'll Uh like tune out after she's like, all right, this isn't the end. Yeah, as soon as I go on my rant, she just cuts off. No, she'll be like, she has some good points, but sometimes it just keeps going. (laughs) Huh? Like, you just keep going. Sometimes it's just kind of like, uh-huh. All right. Where's Uh, the subject? (laughs) uh, Because we go off on subject a lot. That's what she's like. She's like, uh. I like to thread the needle, but sometimes you forget how deep that needle is. You forgot the needle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, do you want to go to Fire Festival? Maybe we could do a live podcast from the Fire Festival. Fire Festival. Festival. Yeah, yeah. We'll hand out cheese sandwiches. Oh, yeah, dude. We'll get him on the podcast and he'll just like buy everything from us without having, having money. Who wants water? You got to suck this dick. <laughs> you have to buy a ticket for the water. It's $600. <laughs> But yeah, bro, the whole fire festival thing. I hope, like I, because only stupid people are going to be going to this. Yeah, and all these influencers are going to go to it, and it's going to be a shit show again. My favorite thing that happened to, at the original fire uh, festival was the guy who won tickets, and he was just like, "I get to watch like rich people yeah. cry." <laughs> he was fine. He was like, "I'm good." Yeah. yeah. And they were all fighting for like mattresses and waters. It and was. Shit. It's, it was such a fucking train yeah. wreck. I would have just like gone like for that guy that just got the free tickets. I would have just gone into town and been like, "Hey, can I stay with you? I'll give you money." The truth be yeah. truth be told, Fire Festival 
Like it can happen. Like it, like like somebody can put on this thing and make it be successful. Yeah. It, but the thing is, it doesn't make sense that people are buying into it again mm-hmm. when it's coming from the same guy who fucked it up the first yeah. time. And uh, this is going to be in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean. Yeah. So not Pablo Escobar's island. So yeah. uh, it's going to be on international waters. Ugh. No, it's, it's going to be on some island in the Caribbean. It's going to be on some island in the Caribbean. They're going to change. It's going to be like an El Paso, Texas yeah. or something. But um, that whole, like, the whole beginning be sus- of that. I'm going to be suspicious like, uh, if I start seeing boats full of children and Seth Green hanging around there. <laughs> Seth Green? Have you not heard that shit? What? The Seth Green, like, has been on Epstein Island, but he also has a dungeon in his house where he keeps children in it. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, because apparently some guy who was, like, a close friend of his mm. said he's seen it and then he started going on these crazy internet rants and then sure enough like a couple of weeks later he turned up dead after like an a, a oh, posed wow. suicide and uh people talk about like uh, seth green has always been involved in some kind of like pedo ring shit like it's again this is delving into more conspiracy yeah. shit um i the more I, the more I hear myself talk, I am like thinking I am kind of insane. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just like conspiracy theories. Yeah, they're fun. fun. They're fun. Yeah. They're yeah, fun they're to right. get into. Um, it just makes you think. Yeah, it makes you see the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. But no, like um, what is it? Going back to uh, our first story of Trump being and uh, getting get all that shit. Yeah, I do wish he had to spend the night in prison mm-hmm. for like a cut, like the week or something. Because it, it's it's close to the weekend, and usually if you get like arrested on a Friday night, you have to wait until Monday to see uh see someone. Mm-hmm. Like they keep you over the weekend. He wakes up and he just sees like R. Kelly hovering over him with that mask on. He's slowly <laughs> unzipping his pants, just pisses on him. <laughs> and Trump's like, "Oh, <laughs> this isn't my Dr. Pepper." <laughs> Did you get my call? Did you get my love yeah, letter? But- I hope that the whole thing shakes out. The, uh, the, the, what's her name? The attorney or lawyer, whatever she is. Yeah. The one that's running the whole operation. Uh, she's pushing for a, a speedy trial because all of them are pushing. Three of them have already put in requests to push it to federal because what they're trying to do is to push it to federal because they're banking on the chance that Trump will win the presidency and he could pardon them if it's a federal court case. <laughs> if it's a state case, he can't pardon. So that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to, and Trump is trying to delay it until he becomes president. Mm-hmm. So that way he can pardon himself, but he's trying to move it to a federal court. So that way it's considered a federal case so he can pardon it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, everyone sees that your plan, what you're trying to do. You're trying to elongate this so you can get out of it. That's why everyone's pushing for a quick date. She wants to do it in October. But the chances of that happening are, I think, pretty slim because there's a lot of evidence they have to go through. They have to give the lawyers time to go through it. But, of course, the lawyers are going to be like, no, it's going to take us like two years. Mm. (laughs) But, yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh, and then someone already flipped on them. Mm. He was, like, on Trump's, like, lawyers. uh, Like, one of Trump's lawyers was covering this person. Yeah. And this person realized, like, oh, I'm fucked if I let this go on. So they dropped that lawyer, got their own lawyer, and then just started like, I'll tell you everything I know. And they told him, was like, yeah, he tried to destroy the tapes. Yeah, yeah, he tried to flood the basement. And he tried to get rid of all the evidence. I like, want to I want to see yeah. Donald Trump try to pull some Chapo shit, try to fucking dig a tunnel, I get feel the if, fuck out of there. I feel if he is found guilty, he's going to run. I would. If you know you're fucking guilty, fucking why not? Yeah, but, I'll go uh, ahead and up. Where do you think ball. he'll go? Huh? Where do you think he'll go? Chad. Uh, you need to go to Russia to be with daddy? Huh? He'll go to Russia to be with daddy. I'll go to Jamaica, smoke on that kush, give me a fucking mansion full of hot Jamaican women. But they can extradite. He has to find a place where they can't extradite you. Oh, shit. So, China. He's been getting, <laughs> he was chummy with the China guy. Yeah. Even though he just, like, dragged their shit during COVID. You can buy a lot of Chinese prostitutes with that kind of money. Yeah. He can buy a Chinese Melania. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Melania, but Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> or what? What if he just goes to fucking Melania's home country? Where's she from? I have no idea. That's actually a good question. She's from from like some fucking Slavic country, I think. Yeah, but um, no, I think if he ran, he would. He'd probably go to Russia because him and Trump are tight. 
or him and uh, Putin are tight. Where's she from? Uh, Slavin American former model. So is she Slavic? Yeah, but there's it's a Slavic nation. So I'm looking. You yeah, Slo- uh, Slovenia. Slovenia. Okay. So she is Slavic. Yeah. But um, I don't know if you can extradite from there. We'll see. I also, mean, Melania will probably be like, yeah, you're not coming with me. <laughs> yeah, probably. I yeah. feel like she, she hates that motherfucker. No, yeah. She only married him for, I mean, it's money. Like, you're set for life. You're good. She's fucking only, she's only 53. Yeah. She's 53 years old, and Donald Trump is 77. Yeah. Have you seen the pictures of his uh, his first wife's grave at Mar-a-Lago? Oh, yeah. It's just all overgrown and shit. Like, no care given to that fucking grave Well, you know why he did it, right? Oh, taxes. Yeah. Yeah. If you put a grave. So, for those who don't know, if you own a house and if you put a uh, put someone in the ground behind your house in your backyard, um, it becomes a graveyard and you don't get uh, taxed on your home. Yeah. Well, to wrap up this episode on news, let's go to <laughs> some local news. Have you felt any, like, danger, like, in town lately? Are you talking about the lady that stabbed her guy? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody at our local movie theater got stabbed. Yeah, they were, it was apparently, like, a domestic disturbance. They were fighting, and then she just fucking stabbed the shit out of them. <laughs> I bet she was Mexican. She was Mexican, wasn't she? I have no idea. Yeah, I, I don't guess. think they released the names or anything yet. But, uh, the, oh, no, and then, uh, what was it, last week? They, uh, that murderer... That had a fucking head in his backpack. What? Yeah, dude. He was up over where I lived, up towards Gillsville. <laughs> what the fuck is happening to this areas yeah. around us? But, uh, yeah, he fucking, like, he went into, like, a house, I think, murdered some people, took the head, and then, like, was walking down the road. And it was on, like, Facebook and everything. People, uh, the police put out a thing being, like, uh, um... If you live in this area, lock your door, stay inside. If you see anyone on the road, call the police immediately. And they gave his description. They had his picture. And, yeah, it's fucking crazy, dude. Okay, so they haven't given out the names, but apparently the fight was between a couple. Yeah. It was a Mexican lady. Oh, was it? It it had to be. Mm. The passion, man. Fucking stabbed the shit out of you. But you know what she was stabbing? She was probably screaming, do you see what I'm doing because I love you? Mm. She's just fucking stabbing the shit out of him. Well, some. I wonder, I wonder what movie they watched. <sighs> I have no idea. Man, that's crazy to think about it. Yeah. But um, what else happened around here? There was like there was another a, couple, a man uh, got a man. Fights. Oh, I was gonna say another man got killed in the lake. Oh, another one. Yeah. Yeah. Up in Lawrenceville. It's fucking ridiculous, dude. Yeah, twenty-two-year-old man swam into deep water and did not resurface. Yeah. St- stop swimming into deep water yeah fucking but, hell well it's crazy too because the my anxiety is through the roof it was like two weeks ago they pulled that one body out of the water they had to find him with like sonar and shit because even though he was wearing uh like a life jacket and everything, yeah. he was 40 feet under the water like it's almost like the life jacket lost his buoyancy and something was keeping him at 40 feet under the water Hmm. That's fucking crazy, dude. You think he was set up like somebody fucking like put like dry cement in there? No, it was it was a life jacket. Oh, and they, he he just sank. Oh, great! Now I'm even more fucking paranoid yeah. being on a boat. I, I it's, was like, it's, I, I, boat, I, I, it's that lake. It's that lake, dog. Yeah, the fucking slaves that they fucking killed in that um, mm-hmm. like Oscarville thing. You know what's crazy, dog? I actually thought about this. I not too long ago I went to the the local libraries because you know we like to go to the library yeah. and you know occasionally just look at different like stuff there and um i had noticed that given that we're in georgia they have a lot of georgia material georgia reading material yeah. so they had books about like haunted places in georgia uh the creation of lake lanier stories mm-hmm. lake lanier go uh, lanier uh, lake lanier ghost stories all that shit right nice. i went through all of those books this in the indexes to see if I could find any mention of Oscarville and none of them mention it. Yeah. None of them. It's literally like the, our own library systems have tried to, you can only find information about it on internet from other archives. Yeah. Well, it's because, I mean, the, those books were written by probably white people. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Pro- it's, it's, it's because of like, 
I, I'm I'm sure I've talked about this before in the past on the podcast where a lot of the education system in the South is changed because of uh, campaigning done through the daughters of the confederacy Mm -hmm. like after the civil war they didn't want the south to look unfavorable or considered like i guess crazy for trying to defend slavery so they established all the um what's it called like all the education um or all the educational material for schools to be the go through like specific like pathways yeah. for it to be altered so they basically at an early age try to basically indoctrinate the south and to think that we did nothing wrong that we were just defending states rights yeah. Uh, yeah i remember uh it was eighth grade we had georgia studies mm-hmm. and uh they talked about the trail of te- tears in it yeah and i remember distinctly it being the book being like so you know the the native americans in the area uh, their land wasn't good, so we moved them to another area. And because they decided to move during the winter, a lot of them died on the Trail of Tears. Yeah. And it's like, they didn't decide to do anything. It was like, you forced them to move. Yeah. And the book lays it out as, oh, it's their fault that they died on the Trail of Tears. Like, a lot of them died. Yeah, American history yeah. in the South is so fucking mm-hmm. wild because it will literally be like... Yeah, the the settlers uh, came across the Indians. You're like, yo, you want Oklahoma? We'll just give it to you. Go yeah. have it. No, fuck yeah. And it's they our all... ancestral land. You know, we have graves here, but nah, you can fucking have it. You know. You know some. You know, the, there's some. Uh, there's some material in the South where they claim that the settlers taught the Indians how to grow food. No, fuck no, they didn't. <laughs> the fair... the people, the settlers, the first settlers that came over here were people who wanted to practice their like. It's like they had this weird version of whatever, like, Christianity that they had. Mm -hmm. And they left because no one wanted them there in England. Like, no one wanted them there. Yeah. And they were just the outcasts, pretty much. And they came over here with little to no skills. Like, they didn't know how to farm. America was founded by basically uh, English (laughs) English retards. Yeah. (laughs) Like, no fucking joke, dude. (laughs) All the kids were drunk because they drank beer on the boat because that was the only sterile thing they could fucking drink. <laughs> I mean, they had water, but, you know, that shit went out really fast. Well, like, well, Native Americans were being referred to as Indians because they thought they were, like, in from, India. from India. They thought well, they were from no, India. No, that was Columbus. Huh? That was Columbus. Uh, I thought Columbus was just fucking manatees. That too. But, no, um, he landed... Where did he land? No, he landed... Uh, he went to Puerto Rico for a while, and then he was in the U.S., and that's where he, like, started calling them Indians because he was like, no, we're in India. He's like, no, the fuck you're not. And um, what is it? And I, I liked all the stories of, like, uh, like whatever, like, uh, native tribe <laughs> these people find. I don't know why this popped in my house. like, Christopher Columbus, wild on tour, fucking these bitches, fucking them horse. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Three six mafia. <laughs> But no, like, um, all the names for, like, there's areas here in the South that are named, like, you know, some weird, like, Indian words. Like, Hasawada River and all this well, other stuff. Chattahoochee, dog. Yeah. But, no, it's... it's Gonna get some me of these, a hoochie-coochie. Some of these rivers and, and, like, mountain ranges and stuff that are, have Indian names uh-huh. are literally the Indians telling the white people that came <laughs> here being like, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. And they're like, oh, these are the, I don't know what you're saying mountains. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, isn't that why the Yucatecas called that? Yeah, because they, they were like, like they were trying to talk to them. They're they're telling them like, we don't understand you, yeah. and they're like, oh, the land of we don't understand yeah. you. Oh, Yucateca, and they're like, the fuck are you, Yucateca, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking stupid, dude. And then those, it just stuck. That's the thing I don't understand. Like after like the, you know years and years of being there and learning and. Maybe someone learned the language and finally asked them, like, why do you call it Yucateca? I was like, you know, that means I don't know. And they're like, oh. I want to see, I want to see people, I want to see like documentation of like the Spaniards going back to Spain and be like, yeah, they thought we were gods. They used to call us um, this word, pendejo. And I, it's a, it's a, it was a, it was a word of endearment. <laughs> And uh, they often would pray to us by calling, uh, telling us uh, chupa verga. <laughs> Mama Webel. Mama, Mama Webel. Webel. <laughs> <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> the fish talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's just, 
I mean, there's that one book where I told you uh, a while back. It's um, uh, these uh, Spanish um, like monks or whatever the fuck. They got some natives uh, there in Mexico or in like in central Mexico to write out um, history because they knew how to write in, in uh, Spanish mm-hmm. at that, that time. And also they knew how to write. They, they made up lettering and everything for their language, the yeah. native language. So on one side they said, okay, you're going to put our story on this side and we're going to tell you what to write. And then you just translate on the other one. Since these monks didn't take the time to learn what that language was, they were like, no, they're going to do what we told them. They wrote what the monks said on one side, and on the other page, they wrote what actually happened. Mm-hmm. So on this side, it's like, and we came and brought God to this godless land and saved everyone. And on the other side, it's like, they fucking murdered us and raped our women, <laughs> and we're dying because of them. And it's all there. And then they they snuck little like hidden messages into <laughs> it by like using certain plants and inks that they made out of like roots and stuff in there because they all had meanings mm-hmm. like this certain flower meant like death and that's what they wrote this entire part in <laughs> apparently and, uh, to this yeah. text it says slob on my knob like corn on the cob <laughs> what is it with you right now with check it with me and do your job <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Three Six Mafia. <laughs> I don't Three know six why. Mafia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've also been listening to a lot of Project Pat too. Okay. Patrick Stone. Huh? Patrick Stone. No, Project Pat. No, this is Patrick. <laughs> you know Project Pat? No. Oh. All right. I listen to Get Down. I don't know. I don't know who he is. He's uh he's Juicy J's older brother. You like Juicy Juice or something? Juicy J is. A part of Three Six Mafia. Okay, he's one of the guys. You really don't know much about hip hop, do you? I don't know much about m- anything, like music was like. I like music. I know who people. Well, I, mean, I, I mean, know who groups are, how music and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm not like the type of person who goes in and like retains like, oh, this group is made up by these people's names and they did this and they did yeah. that. And I'm like, oh no, I know that band. <laughs> They're pretty cool. It's funny how much music stuff I do know because I've learned a lot of it just from like years of watching. Like I used to love just watching random documentaries and I uh, watched a VH1. Lot. Yeah, we yeah. well not just VH1, but I used to just like I know one of my buddies, he was super like into like music history stuff. He used to let me borrow like DVDs. Like he let me borrow yeah. DVDs about like the early years of American hardcore scene of the the punk scenes. Nice. And then he uh, he also had ones about just documentaries about this guy who like basically like talked to different artists that were like in the early years of like metal and stuff. And then also I've just uh, watched a bunch of documentaries on hip hop and hip hop culture and it, yeah. it's like I just genuinely I love uh, I love reading up and also hearing stories about people who created some of like the like the most influential music mm-hmm. i like music in general so you know i like to yeah. i like to delve deep into like i listen to a lot of obscure artists yeah because i enjoy digging deep like yeah, don't get I me like, wrong i like going into like deep dives in music but i'm not i'm not in it to like learn everything about it i'm just like oh this is a cool song yeah oh this artist is cool let me look up their other stuff yeah oh, this is cool and this leads me to another band or another artist. Oh yeah, well, okay, that's cool. what that's what I'm saying. Like I, the reason I've been on a three six yeah. mafia kick is because I was listening to a song that included Project Pat, and I okay. was didn't know who that was, and I found out that this guy has a massive discography, and he's been around for a very long time. Yeah. And then I realized, oh wait, this guy was extremely influential to rap, and I've never even heard of him. And then I'm like, oh, he's older, the older brother of Juicy J, a part of three six mafia. He comes. Um, he comes out of um, the what's it called? The the first big wave of um, was it Tennessee Tennessee rappers? Yeah, because mm-hmm. Juicy J Three Six Mafia were all a par- part of the the um, Tennessee scene. Meanwhile, at the time, uh, the scene blowing up in Florida was all um, Two Life Crew and um, Trick Daddy. And then Houston was Scarface along with um, uh, UGK. Mm. And then Outkast was Atlanta. Yeah. And and you realize that all these groups had their own individual tastes and style and, like, influence to, like, the whole that is rap. Yeah. 
And uh, because the thing is, like, a lot of people always like to just lean on West Coast versus East Coast, you know, California and New York. Yes, there were huge parts of hip hop, but there's so much like yeah. in the South and in the, in the center. Yeah, that Houston. Pe- Houston has its own style. Detroit has its own style. Tennessee mm-hmm. has its own style. New York has its own. Florida has its own style. Yeah. Fucking uh, uh, the Midwest has its own style. Yeah. It's called like I think it's Chopper or some shit like yeah. that. People forget about Malibu Tay. <laughs> Malibu Tay. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I just like I watch that movie forever. <laughs> yeah, I could go on and on about just like yeah. how much like de- uh, deep dives I go into uh, music wise, but I try not to because it does get extensive. Yeah, it gets extensive. I mean, this episode is already an hour and a half long. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're th- this was the news episode. Yeah, but I know. Anybody out there listening? Go fucking listen to some Project Pat. There's some great fucking songs out there yeah. that you might just learn that. Um, might be like uh yeah. something that influenced an artist that you listen to yeah. also i do speak uh to end it on music i love the ai uh versions of songs now yeah like plankton's been fucking killing it dude, dude plankton has put out some really good yeah. music lately but yeah he's saying uh what's that one tool song schism yeah yeah i love the patrick ones of him singing country songs yeah have you heard, heard the ones that he's singing uh corridos and shit yeah oh god dude <laughs> I know uh, you sent me one of Gerard Way singing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> singing Norteñas. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is uh, we've peaked as uh, as humans yeah. <laughs> that we're getting artists that have no business singing a certain genre song, but singing it anyways. And it was all right. Yeah, it yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's that's fu- been the news. Yeah, let's fucking wrap this shit up. <laughs> uh. Maybe one day I'll do a deep dive on just the um, different family trees of rap as a whole, you know? Because yeah. um, yeah. I could technically do the same thing with metal, too. Yeah. We'll have Ice-T on. Yeah. yeah. You should invite him on. But anyways, thanks again for listening to another episode of The Night Funk. Make sure to follow us at The Night Funk Podcast on Instagram. Also on TikTok, where we post reels from time to time, and you can get updates on future episodes. You can also find us on YouTube. Um, same name, uh, the Night Funk Podcast. Give, give us a like, a comment, uh, subscribe. Yeah, smash that motherfucking like button. Yeah, okay. Don't and, forget to hit that like button. And don't for, <laughs> and, and as always, new episodes every Friday on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and other places uh, that you can find podcasts. Uh, those aren't important. Just hit the link tree. You just hit the link tree. <laughs> yeah, we have a Discord. If you want to join that gay shit, it's there. Um, uh, <laughs> And then um, we also, um, I have a book up on Amazon. Um, it's called Pastors Eat Pussy Too. <laughs> have you seen those books? I love them. Yeah. Uh, so make sure to go find that. No, Pastor, uh, don't eat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can also find us at our personals on Instagram. Mine is a uh, handful of Pedro. And I'm also in the woods. And yeah, thank you again for listening to another episode. And uh, we'll catch y'all next week. So y'all stay safe. Y'all tip y'all waiters. Uh, Stay out of the movie theaters because motherfuckers be getting stabbed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got. So, been a long month. Yeah, it has. It has been a long month. Fuck you, Donald Trump, uh, Giuliani, all you motherfuckers. Ron DeSantis can suck my dick. Yeah, he'll probably like it, too. Oh, God. I, Never bet, he gets, I bet he gets cucked a lot. Uh, I bet his wife just, like, gets railed by I bet he gets guys. his... I guess, I, I'm, I'm betting that he does coke because he gets that ass blown out, dog. Yeah. He, it opens that butthole. He gives me like closet gay vibes, dog. He no, does. Totally. There's nothing wrong with being gay, but I'm just saying, like, he is one of those hardcore guys that yeah. like does he's not championing wanna... so hard against it. It's, yeah. It's obvious. Come at on, this point. Yeah. Yeah. You're grinding those teeth and someone's yeah. grinding that ass. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag live your truth. <laughs> All right, we'll see All y'all right. next week. Bye. <laughs> Don't do it. Three six mafia.